Hi, this is Bob. Been uh, doing some operating with the QRP Labs QCX Plus CW transceiver here and really enjoying it. It, uh, it has uh, several tuning rates. If you notice right below that zero right there, you see a little bar that shows the tuning rate you're on. That's the uh, very, that's, that, that's the, uh, I believe it, a 50 hertz tuning rate. And if I push it again, I'm pushing this little button, you just push it in, that's your tuning button, and it will change tuning rates. There we go. Now that's on the 10 hertz tuning rate, so it tunes real slow. So you'd have to crank the knob forever there to go from 7.020 to 7.030. So you push that little knob in again and watch that little bar underneath. See it move back and forth? Okay, now it's underneath the zero right there. So that's your faster tuning rate. See there how fast it tunes? Click, 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 click. It goes a thousand hertz each click. Now if I push it again, you'll see that little bar will move. And it moved right underneath that comma there. That's the 50 hertz or 500, excuse me, 500 hertz, and I'm not certain, uh, yeah, 500 hertz, and then when you turn it, you can see it's going 50 on the right side there, see the number go to 50 on that second one from the right, that shows you went up 500 hertz, then you're up 1000 hertz, then 1500, so then I kick it again, just push it in, There we go. And uh, sometimes I got to push it two or three times. That's okay. But what I'm doing, I'm just pushing in on the tuning knob. And that's taking it to the slow rate. So each time I go now, it's going up 10 hertz. Each little click of the knob. I think that's cool. Allows you to tune people in really nice. Uh, and let's see. There's a 1N5819 diode in the, on the circuit board. And, well, the focus is not very good there. Have I got my finger in front of the focus or something? There it goes. This is an autofocus camera. It's a very cheap little camera. Sometimes you may hear a click, 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 click. That is the lens in the camera focusing. And sometimes it does that and it picks it up in the microphone. So I... I have to, to let you know that that's, that's what that is doing that. So anyhow, like I say, each time you push this, it changes the tuning rate. Now if you just turn it, and you can see the digit on the right is going up 10 hertz each time. Really cool. Really cool. Now, I don't know if I have, uh, I think I have, I wanted to show you too. I'm running the Dr. Dre Beats headphones. I bought these at a flea market. And uh, I was really happy I did. Boy, do they work nice on this. I'm holding that up there so you can hear the CW. Now, another thing I wanted to show you. In this little pill bottle here, I have constructed an LM567 uh, decoder. and that's decoding the CW but it's very very narrow
you can go about 30 hertz above the signal right there before it cuts out and I go down low about 30 hertz that's it so that helps me tuning in the CW signal because I'm not really good with uh, with the musical tones with uh, with uh, zero beating it's a 700 hertz note and he's telling him 73 and give me the dit dit so anyhow uh, I wanted to show that LM567 decoder circuit I got a switch on the top here for turning it off and on and you'll see my headphone plugs right in there there's a socket for the headphone and then that's in parallel with the little two wires that come down to the decoder and then the power for the decoder is separate coming in from the 12 volt power supply so I wanted to show that little decoder and it's just built on a piece of perf board now the circuit that I used was put on the internet let's see where we have it here it's K3WWP K3WWP is the guy who came up with with that circuit from somewhere and uh, thank you I think his name is John uh, I do believe I looked him up but my memory is not so good anymore <laughs> anyway I wanted to show how nice that works and they used to make one at uh, QRP Labs for the QCX transceiver but uh, they stopped making it from what I understand but I really think it's neat and it's helped me a lot with uh, tuning people in okay now I got uh, I got this set at 13.8 volts exactly so I get 5 watts out and I wanted to show you my super duper dummy load here this is it right here this is a number 313 light bulb now you would think a number 47 might work pretty good well it would if you had a 1 watt transmitter but this is a 5 watt so I put a 47 bulb on there and it lasted about 2 seconds it was so bright so I'm gonna put this on here this little 313 bulb is just right for a dummy load for the QCX plus there we are I wanted also to show you I haven't demonstrated it yet but with that decoder on there it also lights when you push down the key and that's what I'm demonstrating here so it gets the 700 Hertz tone and that's what you use to uh, align the decoder when you build that little board and what else this uh, that, that looks like, uh, has very low power consumption it only draws about 12 milliampers on receive which is really cool and uh, I'm measuring 12 right now I've got it connected to my Heath kit power supply bench type power supply which is current regulated and variable so uh, I like that for checking things out because I can set the current for the value of whatever rig I'm working on and uh, if it exceeds that that means there may be something wrong then it won't uh, usually uh, it won't usually fry fry some of the parts anyhow so that's the deal there and I'm trying to think what else I might want to uh, let's see we're drawing 12 mils on receive I draws a whole 74 milliampers on transmit for 5 watts out so if you're going to run from batteries it should last you a long time and what else we got here I guess that's about it so you can look up K3WWP to get that decoder circuit uh, on the internet. If you just Google him on on uh, Google, uh, he, he's on there. 
and you should be able to find the circuit no problem. It was pretty easy to wire up. It takes only one, uh, one 8 pin IC, the, uh, the LM567 and, and about six or eight other parts. That's all there is to it. I did have to fiddle around with getting the levels correct. Uh, you have to run the volume control up and down on your uh, receiver, whatever you're feeding it with, uh, and get the level correct so that it works the uh, decoder properly. And I did put a, a series resistor in there. I think I have a 10,000 ohm series resistor going to the decoder to cut that uh, level down because it was too much. So uh, anyhow, I, I, I will say at this point that you may have to play with the decoder a bit if you're going to build a decoder, the LM567 decoder. And I guess that's all I've got right now. I just wanted to show the little decoder, how it works, and also how the uh, QRP Labs QCX Plus transceiver uh, is working just fine. So really, really been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, it's a great little transceiver. Or, or Yeah, great little transceiver. And I, I had a couple of guys on the air come on and uh, with, that I was uh, in QSO with and tell me, Wow, that thing sure is stable. Well, it's crystal controlled. It's like an SDR receiver. It's got a, a microprocessor and uh, computerized circuits that determine all these different functions. It's got a whole list of very neat functions. And uh, the stability is crystal uh, stability, just like you would have in an in a IC7300 or a, uh, any of your really good transceivers, the, the FT-857, they all have a master crystal oscillator and then they uh, divide that and get your other uh, necessary operating frequencies from that so everything is super stable and so the QRP Labs QCX Plus has got the same sort of system with the crystal oscillator there at, at the uh, microprocessor so I guess that's it. I kind of ramble around some from time to time. And, uh, well, hey, that's, that's the way it is. Oh, I wanted to show you, too, I put a fuse in there. This is a 2-amp fuse. If something's going to draw, uh, like, 1 amp, I'll put a 2-amp fuse in. If it's going to draw 2 amps, I'll put a 4-amp fuse in, because you want to have the fuse a little bit larger than what your current normally is, so that you don't have a fuse going out on you all the time. And uh, so twice the... Uh, now, so it's 74 milliampers. I could go with a, a 1.5 amp fuse if I had one, but all I had was a 2 amp, and I thought, well, that's fine. So I put a 2 amp fuse in there, and that's just for emergencies. And they got that diode in there, that 58, uh, what's the number of that? 5819 diode, and that 5819 diode is in series with the positive lead. So if you should accidentally connect the power up backwards, nothing happens. It just won't turn on. I think that's really cool. I like that. So anyways, uh, take a look at uh, QRP Labs. It's actually listed at QRPLab.com. QRPLab.com. And take a look at the uh, assembly manual and all on this thing. I have no connection with them whatsoever, but I sure do like their product. That's it, guys. Uh, 73s and good DX.